Hi guys, let's do a little bit of reading check-in today. I read three books and I'm interested in talking about these books with you guys. <laughs> so the first one I want to talk about is A Village of Stone by Xiao Lu Guo. Um, this is probably uh, one of the earliest books by Xiao Lu Guo and this one was originally written in Chinese, uh, translated into English by um, Cindy Carter. So. Um, I would say Village of Stone is probably the darkest book I have ever um, read by Xiao Lu Guo. And uh, if you are familiar with uh, her works, especially the more recent ones, you'll see that her tone, her writing tone usually is um, uh, quite light, a, a bit bright, um, you know, some humor here and there, some irony and all of those things. And this one, um, and also she tends to experiment with form. And this one, on the other hand, is a bit more conventional, as in the prose is written more conventionally, traditionally. Um, not much funny bits, there are some parts, but this book is mostly uh, dark and gloomy, I would say. So this book is about this young woman, uh, whose name is Coral, and uh, we follow her as she uh, details her life as a young girl in a secluded village in China called Village of Stone, and also her life in Beijing as a young woman living with her boyfriend. And one day she receives a mysterious parcel containing a uh, brined eel, uh, and that instantly reminds her of her life in Village of Stone as a, as a young girl, um, and it also reminds her of all of the bad things that happened to her while she was a uh, while she was a girl living in the village. And basically, we would later learn that her life in the village was not exactly a very good one. She did not have a happy family, and she also experienced uh, some pretty harrowing um, event. Um, not just not just one event, but a few that really uh, I would say traumatized her as a person. So um, from there, you could see that this book is really heavy. Um, I found it kind of difficult to read this book very quickly, unlike a lot of uh, Xiao Lu Guo's other books, because because of that reason, um, it kind of gets. A little depressing sometimes. There are certain parts that are very graphic when it comes to portrayal of sexual abuse. Um, I think that is probably like one of the heaviest things that this book has. You know, it, it contains this really graphic depiction of uh, uh, abuse, sexual abuse. Um, also, trigger warning. There are some depictions of uh, abortion as well. Um, and I would say in a typical Xiao Lu Guo novel, uh, even though this one is probably like one of her earliest, um, like her works that would eventually come later, right? uh, she also explores the idea be uh, between uh, living um, somewhere where you're coming from versus living somewhere far from where you are. You know, this kind of... Um, comparison between uh, how it is like uh, being closer to your origins versus being very far from your origin. You're going to see a lot of that theme in her other books as well, especially when her characters would go to other countries also, and we would always, we would keep on seeing this theme like recurring in her other works. And definitely it happens in this one, there is this comparison sort of between the life in Village of Stone versus the life in Beijing. And she doesn't really do it in such a way that you can see there's this like black and white comparison between two different uh, situations, but more nuanced take on um, how, you know, on one hand, you know, living in one place is, it's not always nice, but it's not always bad. And it's kind of like the same thing on the other place as well. But at the end of the day, you know, depending on the character, depending on what they want and their goal, there is a place that they sort of find themselves more uh, comfortable in. But there is also this kind of, I would say, 
nostalgia maybe or or this feeling of being rooted towards or rooted in uh, the place where they come from and uh, you know this this idea of the root is also something that you will see a lot in her other works um, so it's definitely here the ending is um, for me is quite nice I really like the way the author wrap up uh, this book and I gave this one four out of five stars so um, the next book also takes place in a village and this one is in Africa <laughs> in Nigeria so this is uh, the concubine by Elechi Amadi uh, Elechi Amadi is a, a Nigerian author and the a concubine is a story of a um, of a group of villagers in an Igbo village uh, I would say sometime in mid 20th century so the village where they live in is also fairly secluded and uh, when reading this book we can see that the rules that the uh, villagers in this uh, in this village follows you know the, the societal expectation is especially on um, gender norms for example um, gender roles are kind are probably kind of different from what we are used to um, and also the villagers uh, belief in superstition and superstitious belief is going to be a recurrent theme in this novel but it is not treated like some kind of magical realism element like it is it is included in this novel as part of the realistic um, uh, element in here to sort of prop up the realistic depiction of the people in this in this uh, in this novel so what this book is about uh, we follow a um, a woman a young woman whose name is Ihoma and she has children, she's already married to a young man but at the beginning of this book the young man that she um, she has as her husband dies um, because of some circumstances that I would rather not talk about <laughs> but anyway her husband dies and because Iwoma is a really beautiful woman, she is uh, highly respected in her village. Um, a lot of other young men also covet her. Um, they basically they they want to marry her, but because of the situation that Iwoma finds herself in, you know, being being a woman who just lost her husband, she's kind of. Um, uh, she she is kind of in a dilemma where you know she she simply cannot just say yes or no or whatnot because of the village uh, expectation on how a young woman should act, especially a a, a married woman you know uh, on top of that, and um, <clears throat> the conclusion of this novel just pretty much. Um, in a way, it sort of reveals um, why the things that happen to other villagers who attempt to sort of uh, uh, to 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 uh, to court Ihoma, you know, the other young men who attempt to court Ihoma, um, it sort of explains in a way why those things happen to them. But uh, at the same time, it doesn't do so in this in this kind of like magical way. But it also fits in a uh, realistic, I would say, narrative framework, you know. And uh, the story pretty much just highlights how people like people can be. Even when in a uh, situation where the rules that they follow in, the, in their society, you know, the, the mores that they follow are different from what we are used to or how society is like in other places but people are still going to be people anyway right whether they are in here or in in this book or wherever so um, this book I would say doesn't really have like a specific person as the um, as the main hero 
rather I would say the entire village is sort of like an entity that could act as a character and this book is more like a snapshot of that uh, that village at a particular time and happens to be centering around a young woman named Iwoma. So um, yeah, I think this is a really interesting novel uh, even though it shows like you know all these differences in societal expectation this book also doesn't preach it doesn't uh it doesn't criticize uh it just shows the story as it is and uh you know um i think one of the important things that you could sort of um do when you're reading this book is to sort of follow the um the narrator's um, way of withholding judgment and just sort of read the story, read why people do certain things and just follow the characters, <laughs> I would say. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice book. I think it's somewhat refreshing to me. So um, moving on to the next one, I have this book by Kim Tui. It's, it's called Man, and this one was originally written in French and was translated into uh, English by Sheila Fishman. So Kim Thuy is a French, Viet not French, Canadian Vietnamese uh, author. So uh, Ma'an is a story of a character named Ma'an <laughs> and she comes from Vietnam and uh, when she's a when she's a, a a young girl uh, or a young person living in Vietnam, uh, the there's war going on and it totally sort of um, affects her family life and you know safe to say you uh, she doesn't really have a really happy life as a kid in Vietnam and when she got a bit older she is uh, her mom arranged an uh, a marriage for her with a foreigner and because of that arranged marriage maan ends up living with her husband in canada and it is in canada that maan sort of explores a certain passion of hers and that is cooking and so you can see a lot of like um food imagery on the cover here uh and because of the uh, growing interest in things like Vietnamese cuisine in the Western world at the time, Ma'an ends up becoming someone, someone who is uh, a, successful, uh, a successful chef and she has a restaurant and all of those things. And later she would also discover a passion of a certain kind. And this book pretty much explores how Ma'an's life is kind of different before and after um, this arranged marriage of hers. Um, it sort of highlights how she sort of discovers herself once she is able to sort of escape this uh, uh, the situation that she had as a child. And you know, now that I'm talking about this book right now, I feel like in a way you could also, um, you know, in a similar vein as Village of Stone earlier, you can also have this kind of connection between, um, you know, uh, how it was before at a place uh, where your, your your origin is versus, um, you know, how it is after being displaced in some way or another, right? And um, I think the story in this book is quite nice. There are, there is some passion that I could feel emanating from the writing. However, another aspect of the writing that I just didn't really like, and <laughs> I usually don't really like this kind of writing in other books as well, is how this book is kind of written in really short and snappy vignettes of Ma'an's life. Um, they are arranged in chronological order, but uh, they are more like um, snapshots of Ma'an's uh, memory of her life. And so each chapter are like really short, um, really quick, um, not a lot of detail. So it's like m a lot of the things that happened to Ma'an are just sort of glossed over. And it makes the book feel somewhat uh, whimsical. Um, 
And I think that sort of dilutes the emotional punch that this book could have, uh, you know, especially with how the book depicts things like war and uh, eventually, you know, the, the, the change of life that Ma'an's experienced in Canada and the passion that she would soon discover in a uh, spoilery part of the book. <laughs> and I think those things could really be explored in a much more deeper way, powerful way, but because the writing is just sort of um, glossing over all of these things, not a lot of details, it feels kind of wishy-washy to me and it just didn't really work so much, so I gave this one three out of five stars. Anyway, those are all the books I want to talk about in this video, and uh, I really do recommend you guys trying out these books if you have the opportunity. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, nothing else I'm going to talk about. Well, yesterday I just bumped my head on a window and I have like a wound over here. Had a little bit of blood. It, it, it instantly reminded me of, you know, how, you know, those characters in movies, you know, action movies always end up having like blood on their heads or whatever. And when I bumped my head on the window, it was like really painful. I didn't know how I was able to function. I, <laughs> it was painful. So I imagine that those people in the movies with all of those blasts in their head, they must have received much more severe blows. And how are they able to do what they do? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that's a, that's a strange non sequitur. But yeah, just things that happened to me recently but anyway i'll see you again in a different video if you want to talk about things that happened to you recently also hopefully it's not bumping your head on the window and bleeding let me know in the comments below and uh, i'll see you again next time bye